Yo, yo, what's happening? Houston, this is the place to be. And I am DMC in the place to be with my man Brad Gilmore and the one and only, the champ, the man Booker T. So let's get it poppin'. Can you dig it, sucker? Live from Houston, Texas and around the world. Join the six-time world heavyweight champion, two-time WWE Hall of Famer, and WWE NXT announcer, Booker T. Booker T. Alongside his right-hand man, the boat, Brad Gilmore. As they discuss everything from inside the ring to the backstage and beyond. It's time to get your champagne wishes and caviar dreams. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. Now, can you dig that? Hey, man. Welcome inside the Hall of Fame. I'm Booker T, six-time world champ, two-time Hall of Famer, dog. Got my man Brad Gilmore here with me. As always, and guys, we ready. We ready to do this thing because I'm feeling... Good. I'm feeling real good. I'm ready to get into some some real 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 talk here today. I want to welcome everybody inside the Hall of Fame in the chat. But uh let you guys stay most definitely most definitely get your champagne wishes <laughs> and have your trees, man. But how you doing, Brad? How you feel, dog? How you feel? Let me answer that for you. Like a monster. Oh yeah, <laughs> man. We get ready to do this thing. How you doing, man? How you feel? I'm doing good, book. You know what I mean? I had a good weekend, you know, celebrated another year around the sun. Got that degree finished. It's graduated. This this that, commencement commencement that, happened. Appreciate you. And you're king like me, man. Look at you that. Fuck, boom, there it is. Um yeah, yeah. you also saw our, our boy, you know, who's moved away for a long time. We saw my man Kyle Hubbard was in town performing, had a live show. So I got awesome. to go kick it with him and see him uh, and a lot of cool dudes here in the underground hip hop scene, you know, go up there and rip the mic. And then, yeah. um, but now I've been looking forward to this, man. I always look forward to the Hall of Fame because, you know, like Mondays are hard for people in general, right? It's like, man, the work, the, the work is starting. Now for you, the work never ends, but for most people, the work is just starting on Monday. And so I like that this is, this is our time. We can all get together and decompress from the Mondays, but you've had a, 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 a days for the last couple of days. <laughs> man, man, I've been going since Friday. I had a seminar I did, uh, um, this week as well. I um, had a couple of signings, and um, I, I didn't get home uh, last night to like after after midnight, and I was going from Friday all the all the way to last night, and uh, man, uh, it was a it was a monster, dog. It was a monster, but uh, but I feel good. I feel good. I, I don't think I, I I would you know feel right if I wasn't working. I don't know what I'd do with it myself. If I wasn't pushing myself every day, man, it, it, it really is like, like Nipsey, man, um, all my life, grinding huh. all my life, sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. More slice, got to roll the dice <laughs> all my life, grinding all my life, man. That's all I know, but I feel good. I feel good. Um, every day is another day, but I'm, 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 I'm really excited. I'm really excited because you know, I'm, this breaking news, this breaking news, the flyer hadn't even been made. And I, I want to let everybody know, you know, because I want the news to get out. I want the internet to pick it up. Everybody, um, Roxanne Perez is making her return to reality of wrestling January 13th. And uh, it's going to be awesome, man. She's going to be taking on the interim women's champion, um, Mia Friday. It's going to be good, man, because Roxanne Perez started with me when she was 16 years old. And now she's gone out there and she's made me proud and to pay it forward, boom, and then come back and work with one that she got a chance to work with before she left, who was a kid, just like her, you know what I mean? So this is like full circle. This is full circle. Guys, if you anywhere in the um, Houston uh, surrounding area, Texas City, Houston surrounding area, January 13th, come out to 9300 M&F Lowry Expressway and uh, – Get some guys, get some because that this might be reality of wrestling's biggest show of the year. I'm feeling, I'm feeling, and you know what? I can feel it in my bones. Well, it will, it will also be the first show of the year, so. <laughs> 
It would be pretty easy to set that uh, bar. No, I mean, big is even though, even, even though, even though this, this is going to top Last the Last 12 months. Yeah. Put yeah. it there. Yeah, no, I'm excited. You know, and we, and we also have um, the former uh, Masse, Mace, Dio Madden, the great black otaku, Brennan Williams, uh, known yeah. by several monikers. He's going to be stepping back in the reality wrestling for the first time, I mean, in five years? But there again, uh, Six one, years? Who, one who started right here, you know, with us at Reality of Wrestling, and now he's coming back because the, the party's not over. The party's not over. The party is just getting started. Um, one door closed, another door is going to open for you. I, I really do uh, feel that, especially if you put the work in uh, more than anything. So I'm so uh, fortunate to be having uh, Dio. What are we going to be calling him? Is he going to be He's called- got a name. He's got a name, and I'm sorry. I, mean, I should have had it pulled up. Is, yeah, what? What is his new see. name? Reality of Wrestling. His name uh, now is Mason D. Madden. I hate I hate that name. <laughs> Mason I, Madden. What about Mason Madden? I, no, you know what? No, I hate it. I hate it. I hate, <laughs> I hate that name. Uh, I'm just saying. Um, we'll work with it. We'll work with it. We'll, 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 we'll spice it up. We'll, 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 give, we'll give him a nickname. We'll give him a nickname um, like we always do. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. But um, it, it's not about the... Uh, uh, the little things we'll figure it out. Now, I do also want to welcome, you know, normally we stream on Facebook, X, uh, YouTube, uh, Twitch, and today is actually the first time we're getting to stream on Instagram Live as well. Uh, so welcome to all of our Instagram viewers for the Shout very first time. Instagram, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know what? You know, we just get bigger. We just get bigger and better. That's what the Hall of Fame is all about. And I wanted to throw this at you because it's two of your uh, fellow Hall of Famers, one fellow Texan, both friend of the shows, birthdays today. That is Stone Cold Steve Austin and Rattlesnake, Rattlesnake. and the GOAT Trish Stratus. It is oh, yeah, man. Trish is still doing it like it's supposed to be done. Shining, shining like new money, man. So, yeah, big, big ups to my, uh, my Hall of Fame um, mates. Well, um, you look. There, there is a lot to get into. There's, 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 there's all kinds of rumors on the internets about where WWE Monday Night Raw might show up. We know NXT's got a lot bubbling under the surface. Also, Charlotte Flair and New Year's Evil, New Year's Evil coming up. Charlotte Flair and Kenny Omega sidelined with injuries. We got yeah. Brian Keith to talk about. He was on Ring of Honor and AEW oh, t- television. Yes, but the thing that I could not wait to do today was I saw a trailer came out for a movie and I, I sent it to you in the rundown. I don't know if you saw it. Uh, yeah, but, yes, I, I saw. And I said, I don't know. Did you watch it? Cause I said, do not watch. <laughs> no, I didn't watch it. Okay. Because yeah. I haven't seen it either. And I said, what better way to kick off the hall of fame than seeing the, 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 the trailer for one of our favorite franchises of all time. I mean, you love Beverly Hills cop, don't you? One, one. You don't like two. Two and two, one and two, one and two, three. I didn't like three. I'm not a big fan of, you know. Yeah. yeah. But now they have Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, which Axel comes F. which comes yeah. out in a couple of months. Now, yeah. are are you ready to see the trailer? I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. It's a minute long. I feel like it's, we should react to this. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's check it out. Let's check it out. Okay. Here here is the official Beverly Hills Cop or four Axel F trailer. Here we go, book. This is the first time we're seeing this. I almost admire you. Still on these streets. Running and cutting. I'm just amazed. Doesn't get to you. A lot of action. Watch your ass out there, okay? I'm gonna be fine. They love me at Beverly Hills. Detective Foley, you ever read your own file? Shootouts, disturbing the peace, a lot. Please tell me you didn't get arrested again. Twice, but I broke out. We put our lives on the line. Every day. And for what? Comes with the job if you're doing it right. Axel. 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 
So how many people have you pissed off so far? I haven't pissed off anybody. Oh, there yeah, we go. 50 50. 50 50. Is it that high? So far. Yeah. Wow. I know we're going to move back to my two Oh, well, there we go. What do you okay? What do you think? First impressions. Now, you know what? I really honestly believe this wouldn't have an opportunity to be, be to be better than all of them. Honestly, uh, just because with CGI now, fight scenes, you know, the gun scenes. All that stuff is going to be a whole lot better now with the green screens. Like, they could do so much now and be able to make um, Eddie look so much better than they did in the third one. The third one, they didn't have none of, none of the uh, CGI stuff working back then. Am I correct on that or not? Yeah, right? No, there wasn't any CGI. It wasn't, it, wasn't really, it wasn't really any of that going on. So uh, I think, you know, just like, say, for instance, with, you know, um, Rambo. Uh, you, you know how they did with, with some Stallone when they did that last Rambo where he was just killing everybody. <laughs> the last I mean, blood. It was blood. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was blood. That before, even one before that one. one yeah. It was, it was blood everywhere, man. I mean, he was shooting people's heads, blah, blah, everything. Was, so, so for me, I really think this would have a chance to be uh, perhaps one of the best uh, in the franchise. I'm serious. I'm excited. I got to see Rosewood and Taggart. I yeah. got to see Paul Reiser. Yeah. Aquel, yeah. that, that yeah. guy was in there. Yeah. Then yeah. you got Kevin Bacon. Everybody's back, and they added a couple of a uh, couple of a couple of new flavors, you know. So I, I I really I'm gonna check it out. But it's on this new stream. It ain't like at the movies or anything. Now you just I think it's at, just at Netflix. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm gonna watch it. I'm watch, <laughs> we we gotta take a break, guys. Stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame, y'all. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame. <laughs> hey man, uh, where we want to start, man? Where we want to start? Well, I need to start by making a correction. It is also Rob Van Dam's birthday, so I need to do that. Oh, oh, my homie, my homie, my former tag team partner. You know, we were tag team champs, you know, back in the day. Everybody, everybody I've been partners with, we've been tag team champs. Rob Van Dam, he falls in that category. Big ups, shoop. That's where that came from. I just want to let everybody know. I stole it. I stole it from Rob Van Dam. The shoop? shoop. Yeah, yeah, I stole it. He did the shoop? That, well, him and I, every time we would end the phone call, it was always the shoop. You know, yeah. yeah. Well, so he started it, and then I just started doing it, and it was just something we would do at the end of our phone calls, you know. And I never knew what it meant, uh, but it was uh, the way we would exit the phone call, <laughs> pretty much ship, ship, like ship, ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love it. Um, you know, yeah. there's a lot of places that we can start this week. Here, um, one thing I do want to make mention of is that the Iron Claw movie comes out this week. Um, and I got a chance to see it, and I will tell you, it's a really well done movie. But boy, is it a tough watch just to see everything that family went through, you know, during that period yeah. of time. I mean, they they you know, my, my, a couple criticisms of it, but overall, the movie was fantastically done. Much criticisms. Go ahead. Um, I mean, I mean, the two things that stand out to me is one, um, one of the brothers just wasn't even covered; they just cut him out of the whole film. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and the director said, because, you know, there'd be too much tragedy in one movie and it'd make the movie longer. Yeah, yeah. I understand somewhat from a narrative perspective, but also when you know that there was, they had six boys and five of them died. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. You, 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 I, I feel like that's more impactful. Um, yeah, yeah I, I just, I understand, but I understand from the um, director side as well. I, I get it. No, I definitely understand what he's saying. Yeah, um, it yeah. just, to me, it's like, if you're going to tell a story, tell the story. Um, yeah, I, but, I, I, get, I, get it. I was just, what, what reason I say I get it is because I've talked, I've talked to, you know, like certain, um, writers that's, you know, you know, talking about writing my story and, and, and it's a whole lot. It's a, it's really a whole lot. And it's, it's so hard to get everything in there. Sometimes they want to intertwine stuff together you know, to try to make it still, you know, close, but embellish the story um, to what it could still make it impactful. Did, did you, let me ask you this, was it, was it still impactful to you? Because you just said it was a whole lot to go through dealing with seeing uh, what you saw. So do you think adding more would have been, you know, more impactful or not? I mean, it's hard to say because I think that the it's one thing, simple, the, it's a very simple question. No, no, no. no. Well, I'll, let me explain. I think what the movie did is it it was two hours and it was a dense two hours, and and you felt you felt like wow, like by the end of it, yes, you felt impacted by the story. Uh, and, the and what was great is I watched it with with the Mrs. Farah, who didn't know a whole lot, if anything, about the Von Erics. See, that's my point. That's 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 why that's where my point comes in. 
um, because Farrah, she doesn't really know the story of the Von Erich, so she's going to still be impacted, still the same, unlike you, knowing every bit and piece of the story and wanting to know every little bit. And the reason I say that is because I just watched George Foreman's story mm-hmm. on uh, the plane, and they showed every for, um, facet and form of, of George Foreman's life and career cr- chronologically. And I was like, man, that's, that really wasn't that great of a movie. But I it was know- good, but it, no, but it was a good movie. But again, yeah, when you know certain things, you're like, wait, wait, this isn't when the, uh, this isn't that when it happened, you know. And and and, and I get that. And so, for, but but but, you know, as a wrestling fan, lifelong, and, and somebody's worked in the business, I am critical a lot of times of wrestling movies and just say like, man, are they doing the art form justice? Are they really telling it like it is? And they did. They respected the craft in this movie. They respected the story. They respected the history. The uh, the gentleman Holt. Uh, McCall- M- McCallany, I think is how you say his last name, who played Fritz von Erich. Book when if, when you see this movie, that guy is Fritz von Erich. It's kind of scary how great he is. Now, my only other criticism, and this is a more of a superficial one, and I'm not <laughs> hating on the actor who played Ric Flair. Ric Flair's in the movie, um, but the guy who plays Ric Flair, even again, Farah, who I was watching it with, we looked at each other and went. I don't know about this guy. <laughs> you know, it's it seemed like some guy who like and and out and he could be a great actor, but just seemed like somebody who saw a couple flair videos and was like, oh yeah, I can do that, you know. And yeah, it, it yeah. doesn't it didn't feel like the nature boy. The guy who played Harley Race, great job. The guy who played Bruiser Brody, great job. Uh MJF's in the movie for a second. Literally, maybe like two seconds. Um, but he's in the movie. Um and Chavo. Chavo's in the movie. I think he did all the stunt coordination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was listening to uh, Chavo talk about it on somebody's podcast. Chavo's uh, he's, he's found his he's found his niche, man. Uh, it was pretty cool. Him being the uh, trainer of the stars, you know, so to speak. It's also a testament to uh, how many projects are are involving wrestling recently. You know, yeah, even yeah. that he's worked on. But the movie was very well done. Zach Efron, you know, who's always kind of had that High School Musical thing attached to him. Man, does he does he shine in the movie as Kevin Von Erich? Um, yeah, you yeah. believe that's Kevin? I'm looking, and- for, I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to checking it out. Uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, as soon as it uh, you know, come across the screen, I'll, I'll click on it, and check it out. Uh, I actually was uh, watching um, the Wrestlers. Uh, oh, the Netflix show. Yeah, yeah, the Netflix show, and uh, I haven't watched it with Al Snow and uh, OVW. Mm-hmm. Uh, that what it is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and. Uh, a uh, big, big, big shout out to Al Snow on uh, this. This one, Al Snow's T-shirts. Oh yeah, collar yeah. and elbow. Yeah. Boom. I just want to represent uh, for a minute. Um, and that right there, um, that show is actually pretty compelling too. So if you get a chance, check it out. Um, you'll definitely uh, take something away from it from an indie wrestling um, perspective, and you know what it takes to you know actually you know do something like this. And one thing I didn't know about OVW is they do television, live TV. I don't know if they still do, but when they was taping this, they was doing it every week. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? How hard, you know, is that, you know? So um, big up to those guys and hopefully they, uh, you know, survived this race. Yeah. I, I, I think I haven't seen it, but I've heard that our boy Matty ice is in it for about 12 seconds. Is what I didn't I see it. I didn't see it. I must've went to sleep on that segment. Blink and you missed him. You know what I mean? <laughs> Story of his life. Um, but uh, yeah, I want to check that out. And again, I recommend the Iron Claw. But yeah, but, but but it's not. It might, I mean, go out and see it. But just like be ready, be ready because it's not the movie you walk out and go, oh man, yeah. Oh. No, it's like the wrestler. Probably it's like right? the wrestler. It's the wrestler, exactly like the wrestler. Probably, um, made you feel like I, like I always tell that story, man. When I watched that movie and it was so close to home, and it was so many scenes that was so close to home, as far as the real life of the. Just a wrestler, not the superstar, just a wrestler. Uh, the guy who do this just for the love of the game. Sometimes it's no money, and especially back in the day when it was just guys like what we called enhancement guys that wasn't making no money. They just was on television getting beat up all the time, but the love of the game. And then when I saw that, you know, in, in this movie, and then at the end of it when the Ram finally made his grand finale and the lights went dim and the credits started rolling, you know, I, I swear, a little tear rolled out of my eye, and I go, "Let's go, baby. <laughs> Let's get out of here." You know, I ain't say nothing more than that because it touched me to my soul, man. I was like, "Wow, how 
how real was that? I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Um, how real was that movie and a lot of those scenes in it? Like when he was, you know, working at the grocery store in the, in the meat section. And then, you know, he's getting ready to hear his music, you know, and, and he comes from the back section and then, you know, rolls out and then the music stops and he's just there to you know, do his regular job. You know, it was like, wow, because that's what life is, you know, it, um, it's theater in so many different ways. And, and I'm sure this movie is going to make you feel a lot like that. If it's anything like that movie, uh, because, uh, yeah, it was really good. It's it's yeah. a lot like The Wrestler. There's a lot of similar, it, like, similarities in the sense of, like, you just see the struggle of what the performer goes through and, and really what this family went through. And and Fritz, you know, I knew enough about him to kind of think of him in the same terms as, like, a Joe Jackson, to where he, like, really pushed his boys to, to do high, you know, to go high and shoot high and, and, and be the world champ and, you know, that pressure sometimes may have been too much for anybody to, to live up to. Um, but but you walk away from the movie thinking a lot about Fritz. That's what I felt like from the movie. I was like, man, that guy, that's an interesting individual, you know. Um, yeah. and, and you don't know by the end of the movie whether you're supposed to love him or hate him or sympathize with him or empathize with him or understand him or not understand him. You don't really know. You have complicated feelings about Fritz when you when you walk out. Well... Just put your, yourself in his shoes for just like one second and just can you imagine the weight of the suffering that he actually had to go through as a dad? Can you just imagine that for one second? That's all you got to do is just imagine that for one second. Man, it's got – I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's, it's definitely uh, it's definitely compelling. Uh, and I, and I'm sure he's he was you know, very, very polarized. I, I don't, don't give it away or anything. I want to mm-hmm. actually see – um, what kind of person he really was for myself because I've, I've heard a lot about Fritz von Eric, um, but, but I've never, you know, saw this t- story told, you know, from a perspective to where I can actually, you know, want to feel a certain way about him. You know, I've never felt any other way about him other than, you know, man, Fritz von Eric, he was the dad of, you know, the, the, a dynasty, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? We gotta, we gotta take a break. Um, stick around guys. You're the whole dog. We'll be back in a minute. Oh. Tien, winter is here, and you know what that means, trying to stay comfortable while you sleep. Well, I've got something exciting for you. That's right, Book. We've recently discovered a game changer for a good night's sleep. It's called Miracle Made, and it has its new product, the silver-infused bed sheets inspired by NASA. Yeah, these sheets are no ordinary sheets, guys. They've got self-cooling properties that keep you at the perfect temperature all night long. Thanks to NASA-inspired technology. And here's the kicker. They're self-cleaning, too. Infused with silver, these sheets prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth, leaving them fresh and clean three times longer than regular sheets. So that means no more gross odors. Plus, they're all about comfort and quality. Miracle sheets are luxuriously comfortable without the crazy price tag of other luxury brands. Trust me, book. They feel as nice, if not nicer, than the sheets used by some five-star hotel. And just in time for the holidays, guys, these miracle sheets make perfect gifts for your loved ones. And who doesn't want better sleep and luxurious bed sheets? And guess what, guys? You get three free towels with your purchase. But wait, there's more. These sheets are designed with your skin in mind. No more sleeping on bacteria that can clog your pores. You don't want that. Sleep clean with miracle. Yeah, so here's the deal, listeners. Go to trymiracle.com slash booker to try it today or gift it to someone special this holiday season. And guess what? You will save over 40%. Do it! And don't forget, guys, if you use the promo code at your checkout, you'll get three free towels and an extra 20% off. And if that wasn't great, here's the best part. Miracle stands behind their product with a 30-day money-back guarantee if you're not 100 satisfied you will get a full refund from miracle made hey guys upgrade with miracle made go to try miracle.com slash booker and use the promo code booker and, and claim your free three-piece tile set and save over 40 percent try miracle.com slash booker treat yourself or a loved one this holiday season to a gift 
of better sleep. Don't wait. Try Miracle Made today. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame. Um, I know we got a lot to talk about here uh, this week. Uh, most definitely, one thing I want to make sure I remind everybody, everybody, guys, in the Texas City, Houston surrounding area, January 13th, Roxanne Perez makes her return to Reality of Wrestling, man. I know you guys want to get your tickets. Go to realityofwrestling.com. Do it. Do it now. I do it for you. You know, um, it's awesome that you know we're getting to use some of the NXT uh, uh, superstars that come down for Reality of Wrestling, and the Row Nation has been so receptive and warm to them, as has the, the whole staff and crew at Reality Wrestling. We're just excited to have them down and get to mix it up with some of our talent, learn from them, observe them. Um, it is going to be a, a fun, fun evening to see Roxanne back in a reality of wrestling ring because I remember her last match in, in row and, you know, she, you know, they gave her the ring and she kind of said her goodbyes. And I, I think that, and we all hoped in a lot of ways, okay, this is the last time we see her, you know, Hey, psh, you're off to WWE. You're going to be a massive star. You know, we'll watch you on TV, but it's, it's awesome that we're actually going to have that moment to have her come back and to, to mix it up. With um uh, with a young talent that was similar to herself, Mia Friday. I don't know when the last time she uh she came or when she started or how old she was when she started, but she was young too. She was like she was like sixteen. She was like I sixteen. Mean, her, her parents were bringing her to the shows. She had like homework to think about later that yeah. night. You know what I mean? Yeah, seriously, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it was nuts. Yeah. So I mean, in a lot of ways, Roxanne's looking at somebody who was right in her same position. And quite literally, uh, being the interim you know champion right now in reality of wrestling, that's a title that Roxanne used to dream. She she said that was her dream. Her dream, you know, obviously was to be a WWE superstar, but also she wanted to win the reality wrestling women's championship at eight years old. At eight years old, yeah. Think Crazy. about that. Yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> it's yeah. wild, man. And so, um, so the fact that she's going to come back, have a chance to become champion again, but also. Um, be be in the new reality wrestling arena, um, which is pretty sweet, and yeah. and just to get the show show love for the fans one more time. I'm excited to call another Roxanne match. I'm really excited about that uh, that date. Uh, I'm serious. Uh, I I don't I, I don't think I get too excited about shows, but this one I'm, I'm pretty excited about. But uh, not only uh, uh Roxanne's coming back, but uh, Mace Deal Madden, Mace uh, Madden, a great. Uh, great uh, Black Otaku. Uh, what is it now? Mason D. Madden. Mason D. Madden. Mason D. Madden. Okay. Uh, MDM. 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 There we yeah. go. Uh, MDM. Uh, I like that. MDM. We we could do something with MDM. Yeah, right? We you feel that. that? I like it. MDM. MDM, I like, man. I like that. MDM. That's what it is from now now. <laughs> We can forget about the other day, okay? Now, you did just say, I like it. And I wanted to see how you felt about Trick Williams uh, doing his own rendition of his song recently on N uh, on NXT, doing your ad-libs as the crowd saying, whoop that trick. Did you did, did, did he clear that? Is that gimmick infringement? I don't know. This is a gray area for me in the in the wrestling law. He didn't clear it, but uh, it, I, I cleared it. I cleared it for it, you know. Now, I want to see that kid shine, man. I want to see Trick move to the next level. I want to see him, you know, win. And, you know, he even used a tell me you didn't just say that. Uh, and I was right. like, you know, you know, roll with it, bro. I mean, whatever whatever I can do to help you get to the next level, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to be one of these old wrestlers uh, bitter about somebody using something you know, that I use back in the day, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm just not. Um, and, and, and I talk to Trick on a regular basis. Uh, he, he's like one of my pupils and I'm definitely going to guide him hopefully all the way to that, you know, to that end zone, man, because I feel first time I saw Trick, I, I, I thought he was talent. Uh, even before he ever got in the ring, I, I say, man, there's something about this guy. He, he, Passes that airport test, dog. When when you see that guy walking through the airport, you, you say, who, who's, that, "Who's that guy?" You know what I mean? The ladies turning, they looking. You know, the guys looking there. Nah, he got to be somebody. He got to play for something. He's one of those type of things. 
he, uh, he, he fits that box. Every checks off all of those boxes, you know, and then to get in the ring, I, I, like I've talked to him, I was, it's not even about wrestling, just about going out in the ring and performing. If you can do that and do that very, 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 very well, you're going to win every single time. Um, and, and that's what he does. And he does it very, very well. Uh, so for trick, Oh yeah, man. Uh, you know, and he just took it all the way, man. Uh, and I, 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 like I said, in, in the ad libs, I like it because <laughs> <laughs> it's good, man. It's fun. Um, yeah, no, I, I love Trick Williams. And and he, here's the other thing I want to ask you though, because you know, we've talked about how you're not so uptight about when other people want to use some of your signature maneuvers. Like, the, um, you know, uh, you go back to Alicia Fox when she would use the scissor kick, in, you know, in homage to you. I could even go back to Lana slash CJ Perry when she was starting to do the Lana Rooney, um, yeah. you know, on her on her own. And then you could even fast forward a little bit to Big E saying, can you dig it, sucker? Uh, and, and then you could, you could uh, just go back and, and think about uh, our truth that just stole all my moves. <laughs> <laughs> do you know what that this well I'll, i'm gonna get back to our truth but, but, but like i say i endorsed it i endorsed all of it everything by spinning spinning form everything yeah so kid, everything so I, everything uh i endorsed it because i want to see want to see that brother win every but, time but like you came up in an era to where okay say you were back in wcw right when you first started and you know macho's in the main event working flair for the title you'd have to be out of your damn mind to go up to the top rope and drop an elbow you know during your harlem heat match right like that's uh, not something you would ever do it wouldn't uh, even cross your mind now even if Mach wasn't working the show you wouldn't think about doing the elbow drop because that's Mach's move right i just wouldn't do it because if somebody's got a kick out of it i i, I can't think about ruining um, somebody else's finish. I, I just can't think about doing that. I guess my, my question is, it, are some moves and, and, and actions so synonymous with a talent that it almost hinders that person from getting the most over by using it? Like, when Seth was using the pedigree, every time he did the pedigree, all I thought about was Triple H. Now, I'm sure there are a lot of new fans who hadn't seen Triple H wrestle. Maybe they thought this was an original move from Seth. But for me, I'm like, I don't like that as his finish because that's Triple H's finish. I don't like seeing the scissor kick as a finish because I'm thinking, doesn't do as good as Booker does. Or, you know what I mean? Like, that's in my mind. And yeah. so I just wonder if that's a hindrance sometimes. You know, um, I, I guess it can be um, in, in, in certain aspects. But um, it's like you know, JR said, it's just paying, paying homage. You know? It's a good way of saying stealing. <laughs> Yeah, right. it's, yeah, it's, it's paying homage, you know, more more than anything. Um, I see guys do my my stuff all the time. I see guys do my my sidekick on a regular basis. Yeah. You know, I invented that move. Uh, I just put put that out there, you know, let everybody. I, I invented that. Yeah, that. That's that's one of my moves. Uh, but 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 I love I love seeing it because it makes me feel a certain way when I see it. Because for me, I never. I never um, pinned anyone with the sidekick. You know, it was just one of my moves. It's a setup so move. I, yeah. So when I see somebody do it, you know, it, it pretty much you know it works into the scenario. I don't see too many people do my 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 um, scissor kick or anything like that, or or any of my other moves. Um, uh, uh, for that for that fact, I'm shocked that no one's tried to take the hangover. Hangover is not something you really want to be doing. It really is. I know, but it looks cool. It looks cool, um, but it's just not something you really want to be doing. Um, I, but but I did see this girl in Japan um, did it. Perfect, I mean, perfectly too, man. I mean, it was it went viral uh, for 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 a while, and uh, I was like, wow, just to see somebody uh, in Japan do my Harlem Hangover, I was like, I was I was very impressed, and, and she put me over uh, and gave me the credit for uh, the Harlem Hangover, so. For me, uh, when I see something like that, it's uh, you know, it's refreshing, man. It's re I always, how many times have, have I talked about relevancy? 
and, and, and staying relevant right. in, in this world. And, and I say sometimes it's, it has nothing to do with you as far as how relevant you stay, you know, on this earth, you know, and for me to see a somewhat a Japanese girl in Japan, a Japanese wrestler, female superstar out there do, imitating, emulating Booker T. Awesome. Yeah, man, that's pretty awesome. I'm just, I'm just saying I'm shocked that no one did it. Now, I know we have to go to break real quick. I didn't want to share this with you because it's now officially made all the headlines. This is on Fightful.com. Roxanne Perez returning. To reality oh, of wrestling. Oh, shake it, shake it, quack, quack. I just had to get it up. That is, y'all. There it was. That is. Didn't I tell you? Breaking news. You got it first right here inside the Hall of Fame. Booker T and Brad Gilmore podcast heat. That's right. ESPN. Oh, yeah. Stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame. Uh, yeah, Roxanne Perez. Uh, wh- wh- who broke that? Fightful? That was Fightful. Yeah, Fightful.com. I appreciate you guys, <laughs> man, for getting that news out there for us very, very quickly, um, if, I'm, if I may add. Yes. Yeah, we appreciate you. You know, they're, they're one of the reliable ones. I- I'm going to yeah. give it to them. You know, Fightful does a pretty good job, man, overall. There's a few out there. but I got Johnny, Johnny on the spot, too, right? Johnny, Johnny on, on the, the spot. spot. Into the show and say, hey man, let's get this news out there quickly. Let's get this news out there quickly. Roxanne, we're, we're breaking news. Roxanne Perez is making her return. She's look here. She's coming home. She is. <laughs> she is. Yeah. yeah. I want that to be her first two words when she talks to the crowd. I'm home. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> you know. But she truly is. You know what? And I also saw, by the way, speaking of the punkster. I saw uh, CM Punk and Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez had a little workout with with each other down in NXT. Um, I, I, the rumor was Punk was all around NXT a couple weeks ago. Man, Punk's making his rounds, man. I, I, I was reading. Punk said he would may be thinking of being the successor of Shawn Michaels one day when Shawn Michaels stepped down at NXT. That's the vibe. That he's getting around in. I was reading that. So, yeah, yeah. Punk seemed to um, be enjoying. I mean, he, he's been down there every time I've, I've been to work. And I'm like, what are you doing here? But, but no, he, he's uh, actually, uh, he's been very, very refreshing, man. It's, it's been a different CM Punk. CM Punk said, this time around, it's not about him. It's about the fans. Well, you know what? It does seem that way. I'm, I'm telling you, he and Seth, by the way, had a great promo last Monday. On a roll. It was a it's great good. segment. It felt real. It felt like it had heat behind it. Um, I mean, the it's way that they went back and forth was great. Yeah. I don't know if you picked up on it, and, I, and maybe I'm looking too much into it. But you know how Seth was cutting the promo of, you know, um, you, you call this place your home. How could you call it your home? You try to destroy this place. And, you know, I'm not. He said something to the effect of, like, I'm here to protect, you know, these people from you. It was the same. It was the same. Um, same verbiage as Hangman Page, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, See, that's what I, I wondered if I was just like one of these people. I'm like, am I looking too much into this, or is that what I think it is? Uh, it sounded it sounded almost verbatim. <laughs> almost. So yeah. let me ask you protocol because I know you weren't there, you don't know. But let me ask you protocol. If you're going to do something like that, is that just you, you're going to save it for in the ring and you're not going to wise anybody up to it? Or I, I, I would, I would, it, it would definitely be um, done right there in the middle of the ring just to, you know, ha- add a real feel to it. Um, it, it. It gives a real reaction. It's not something that you can prepare for. It's something that you really just got to get on the fly. And, and, and I always talk about, you know, guys that talk about stuff, you know, in the back and guys that just do it in the ring. It's a difference uh, the way it looks because, you do it in the ring, it's just a reaction, you know, and I think that's what happens when you do something like that. Feels much more real, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, we'll slap, it's like slapping somebody and they don't know they're gonna get slapped, opposed <laughs> to slapping them and they do know they're gonna get slapped. Because yeah, if they know they're getting slapped, they're doing this, you know. Well, yeah, yeah, they're gonna flinch. They don't, you know, but you know, when the hand is quicker than the eye, you know, you getting slapped and then you blink and after that, you know, what the hell just happened? So yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, I love that. And you know what? I don't know if it, I would think if your two top matches at WrestleMania this year are Cody Roman 2. This is just me like fantasy booking. I know you don't like to do that, but I'm just throwing it out there. If your two nights at WrestleMania, your main events are Cody Roman 2 
and Punk Rollins for the title. That that's not a bad that's not a bad card. You know, that's not a bad headline in two nights of, of matches. I know there was a lot of talk about yeah. Steve Austin, but it, I I don't feel like that's happening, and it feels like they're they're trending in the direction of Punk versus Seth. And um, look, I don't know if Seth Rollins really hates CM Punk. I don't know if he really feels a certain way about him. It, you know, just gauging on what he said, even when Punk wasn't in the company, I feel like he I feel like he's not number one on his Christmas card list. But this is business at the end of the day. I know Booker, you had to work with a bunch of guys, not maybe not a bunch, but a few guys who you weren't eye to eye with all the time. And it's just business, though. And it made it better, I'm it's sure. Always, it's always business. I mean, you know, uh, we got to know we're going to be talking about it uh, as far as uh, Kobe Co- Covington and, uh, and yeah. Leon Edwards. Um, Covington was out for two years. You know what I mean? Uh, he hadn't done anything. Then he gets a title shot. You know, so Punk coming in, you know. Do you feel like Punk is skipping the line? Uh, yes, I do. But I'm also not ignorant and don't realize CM Punk's a star. You know what I mean? Like, anybody who's coming back in that position with that cachet, with that name value, who generates that amount of interest, who was a world t- title holder at, you know, before he left and was a main event player. Yeah. I mean, he probably should be in that conversation. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not mad at it. Um, you know, there are other guys who I'd like to see in that position, but so, so now, so now you back on the same punk no, bandwagon. No, I'm not. I'm not. I just want uh, no, I just wonder because you, you, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just being objective. Here. I, just, I just wonder because it sounded like, you know, that you was back on the CM Punk look, bandwagon. Look, look, let me thing. say this. Okay. No, 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 as far as, look, let's inject CM Punk in the game. Let's get him in the game. Let's get him in now. Let's get him in while it's hot. That's what it sounds like to me, it, what, what you're saying. Well, yeah. Well, if I if I had the book and I'm trying to make money, Yeah. I mean, this guy I, I is, just, is controversial. He's polarizing. He he has news yeah. clippings all the time. Now, yeah, yeah. Right. I want to say this because I, I'm not going to lie. Like, as a fan and as an individual, like, and I don't know the whole story. I can only judge by what I've seen, read, and what people have said, right? That's all I have to go on, um, including Punk himself. I wasn't a big fan of how he conducted himself. You know, that press conference did a lot for me. And yeah, I know maybe I should get over it, what have you. But, like, I don't think that was becoming of somebody. Now, I don't know all the stuff that led up to that. I don't know what happened after. I don't know anything else. I just know what the man said himself, right? But that doesn't mean that people can't change. That was in the past. You know, it was, it, it's not. It's the recent past, but it's the past nonetheless. And um, he does seem, and this is the one thing I will say, because I actually had this conversation uh, with, with my buddy Kyle Hubbard on Saturday, because he's like, what do you think about punk, man? And I said, he does seem different. Like, he just seems like a different person right now in WWE. I don't know if this is the nice guy act. <laughs> I don't know what it is. And I don't know if he maybe has some sense of closure being back and being well-received by the fans and saying, man, man, I, I regret being away for so long. I, I don't know because I don't know him, you know, but he does seem to be in a better spot. I'm not saying he should be the successor to CM Punk. I mean, to uh, Shawn Michaels. But uh, No, no. I mean, they, not, 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 I mean, they were saying also... That's not something that's going to happen like anytime soon. That's something like you know years down the road. Because Shawn Michaels isn't planning on, on going anywhere anytime soon. That, but he was saying just because of, I guess the way he's feeling being around the young group talent. at, at NXT for as being around the young talent, um, knowing what it felt like to be young, you know, once upon a time and being hungry like that, and, you know, wanting to be in a system like that, as well as being a um, a mentor in a system like that as well. You know, that, that kind of stuff right there. Yeah, when you get to a certain point in your, your life, I know for me, I, I know I get a lot out of, you know, working with the NXT guys. Uh, I, 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 and I feel a whole lot better when I go to NXT opposed to just being at SmackDown, uh, being at, at Raw, because I know I'm not doing anything. I can't contribute as much, you know, to those guys on the show. They, th- those guys are working. When it, at NXT, these guys are learning. They're trying to figure it out. So I can, you know, give advice here, give advice here, you know, talk about, you know, give, give, give pointers here, give so for me, I think um, that's what he's feeling being down there because it is it it is a it is a, a uplifting um, um, being a part of uh, that system down there. Those guys give you that kind of energy. Really oh, good. I felt I know when when you got the call, and I hope I'm not speaking at school. You're like, okay, you know, I'll be down there for a little bit, but you know, I, you know, whatever, whatever. But it was like two weeks went by, maybe not, maybe it was even after the first show, 
I remember you talking, be like, man, I feel so energized down there. It's great to be around the young people and the young talent and, to, you know, get some influence and talk to them and see where their head's at and, and, and you know, help, you know, build yeah. the next generation. I think that's what Sean's um, um, liking about it as well. I don't. I never saw Sean, you know, you know, overseeing, you know, uh, you know, something like that. Just because Sean was a star, you know, you normally never see the stars, you know, come back and have those kind of roles, you know. But I, I think getting in there and you know, getting your hands, you know, um, um, you know, dirty a little bit, and you go, man, I really like this, and you find yourself thinking about how you came up. And the, and the advice you got from certain people, and how you wouldn't be there without certain people. Uh, so so I think I think that's got a lot to do with that program down there, for you know guys like myself, guys like Sean, guys like uh, 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 CM Punk, you know Matt Bloom. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah, it definitely uh, makes it makes us feel alive. Yeah, and and why shouldn't it? Why shouldn't it? You know, and, and knowing that you have that that impact, you know. An impact on people like Roxanne, yeah. people like uh, Tiffany Stratton, people like Trick Williams, people like Lexus King, and anybody else who's been on this show, or Lola Vice that we've talked to uh, from NXT. You no, know, we got a couple, a couple of weeks before we um, get back to work. I know uh, Lexus King out there listening. I, I hope he down at least six or seven. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. We got to take a break, guys. Stick around. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. Can you dig it, dig it sucker? Dig it, sucker. Sucker. All right, everyone, it's Booker T and Brad Gilmore here, and we've got something exciting for all you sports, comedy, music, and theater fans out there. We're talking about game time, the fastest, easiest way to get your hands on tickets to your favorite events. That's right, Book. We love all those spontaneous, unforgettable moments, and game time is here to make them happen. Whether it's a last-minute decision to see a game or a sudden urge to catch a live show, game time has got you covered, giving fans access to tickets even at the last minute in over 60 cities across the United States and Canada. And guys, this ain't about getting in. This is about getting the best seats in the house. With game time, you can see images of your seat before you buy it. So no surprises there, guys. You can score tickets swiftly. Skip the line, guys. Just dive straight into the moment. Absolutely. And listen to this. Game time guarantees the best prices. Find tickets in the same section and row for less elsewhere. Game time will give you a credit of 110% of the difference so there's no reason to wait book. so whether it's the thrill of the game the laughter of the comedy the rhythm of the music or the drama of the theater guys don't let the opportunity skip by choose game time grab your tickets and just enjoy the moment live should be spontaneous book so guys don't miss out check out game time now on their app or at gametime.co that's gametime.co take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time just download the game time app create an account and use the code booker for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply lowest price g guarantee oh yes dig it, dig sucker it, sucker and this episode is sponsored by blue chew guys let's talk about it let's talk about sex Hey, you remember when you was always ready to go? I'm talking about strapping the rocket on it, man. Going straight to the moon. I'm talking about getting it done. If you want that extra confidence, I got something for you. Listen up. Blue Chew. Dot com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, but in a chewable tablet at the fraction of the cost. But the great thing, Book, is you could take it any time, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. You sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part, guys, it's all done online on the internet. So there's no doctor's visit, no awkward conversations, no waiting in line at a pharmacy or any of that. And the thing is, book Blue Chew's tablets, they're made right here in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package so no one is the wiser. You know, let's just get it out there, guys. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at BlueChew.com. It, it's like this. Chew it 
and do it. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew absolutely free when you use promo code Booker at your checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping, man. That's BlueChew.com and use promo code and receive your first month absolutely free, man. Visit BlueChew.com. Use promo code Booker to receive your first month absolutely free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And, you know, we want to thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the Hall of Fame podcast. Chew it and do it. Miracle made today. Oh, yes. Make sure you try them sheets, man. I, I will tell are. you, I got some. Huh? I got some. Oh, to me. You know what you, let me know what you're talking about. Well, well, this is what I do like about the most because, you know, me and the missus, we like the, the, the temperature differently. You know, I like a little bit on the cold side. She likes a little bit on the warm side. And what I found with these Miracle Sheets is it's a nice balance because when you get in them, they're nice and cool, man. Like as soon as you get in, at least mine are, I mean, it's got that, that cool factor. Almost like, you know, when you flip the pillow over and it's like got that yeah. kind of chill to it. These are what these sheets feel like when I get in them. Cooler than the other side of the pillow. That's right, man. Yeah, you remember that. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and so that's what they feel like to me. And, and um, you know, the other sheets, uh, and I don't really even know, I should probably uh, uh, look at what the other my other sheets are made out of, but I felt like I was always sleeping real warm with them. Like I'd wake up feeling warm. And with these, um, yeah. I'm not having that feeling, and I, li- and I like that. That's, I like it. <laughs> yeah. They got a silk-like uh, feel to them. Yeah, for that's sure. That's what I like about them. And you know, like some hotels you stay in, they have sheets, but they feel almost like, what's the word? Sandpaper? <laughs> you know, they're like, yeah, these yeah, are yeah. not, what is this, like a like 50 thread count? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> thread count. <laughs> but, I don't do knitting. <laughs> you want to knit in a knitting club or no, something? No, you know, that's how they measure the quality of sheets. It's like a thousand right, thread okay. counts the highest. You know what I mean? Look, I haven't gotten that deep into how they make sheets. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not, am, I, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I wrong here? What? But, but it's cool. It's cool. Look, hey, you look, now you know. Now you, I mean, that stuff you learn in college, <laughs> I guess. You got to get a degree to know that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm mean? <laughs> To okay. know about the three okay. counts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thread counts normally feel sometimes at those hotels a little low. This one feels real high. That's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. Okay. And look, I I got when I ordered the sheets, I got them like two days later. Uh, they were quick, yeah. quick. And right now, you you use that promo code Booker T or go try Miracle dot com slash Booker. You know, you get twenty yeah, percent off yeah. and the free towels. By the way, the towels are dope too. Towels are dope. They're yeah, great. Yeah, I'm serious. No, I mean you. We ain't trying to stay here in the wrong direction. I promise this is not like, oh, they're paying it for an ad, so we're going to pelt them up. No, this is not a gimmick. (laughs) Okay, I'm serious. Uh, I I bought some myself with my own money, you know, so this is not a gimmick. Me too. Uh, I told Charmel, I just told Charmel, you should have got them on Black Friday. (laughs) (laughs) Get that extra percentage off and use the promo code. And what's great about this, you know what I mean, because you're, you're getting better sleep with AG1, so you can also sleep in a better, softer, comfortable sheets with, uh, with yeah. Miracle. And the thing is, too, they're self-cleaning, so if the blue shoe gets a little out of control, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, like, it's all lining up. It's all lining up. All the sponsors go together. You know what I mean? You might need some better help after all that. <laughs> you're going to need something. You know what I mean? And hopefully you manscaped. Look at that. We got it all in one plug. And you know what? You're going to feel so great after after all that. You're going to want to sell tickets to the next one. So you can go to game time. And, they, <laughs> and do oh, it all. Man, that's uh, hey, oh, by the way, also, I want to shout out another uh, show on the network and something you were just on. I listened to it yesterday, which was uh, the Kurt Angle show. You were on the Kurt Angle show. And I want to shout out, he and his co-host yep. had a lot of good questions, man. And um, it was more than just a, a casual convo. It was, it was an interview, and I, and I really liked the approach from it. And it was a, it was a good listen, good to, good to listen to. Shout out to Kurt Angle and the Kurt Angle Show. 
always had a great time working with Kurt. Uh, it was great being on the show. Got a chance to go down memory lane, talk about some of the, some of the cool moments that we had, actually had a chance to have together, as well as the match that him and I never got a chance to finish. So, yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. Now, I want to talk to you about a couple of big-name stars that are now on the shelf, um, Kenny Omega and Charlotte Flair. I guess we can start with Kenny. Kenny posted something on Friday from the hospital bed, and he had thought he had a hernia for a little while. It turns out he's had a bad bout of diverticulitis, um, which for people yeah. who don't know, something that Brock Lesnar uh, ended essentially his UFC run and um, definitely his UFC title run. And they had to remove a foot of his intestines because the infection was so bad. So it's not something you can play around with. It's definitely a, a condition and a disorder that can be managed. But when you don't know you have it, it's hard to manage it. And um, Kenny's down with it. And it sounds like he's going to be down for a significant amount of time. And he's still one of the top names in AEW. Um, and, and, and one of their mainstays. I mean, that's it's hard when you have a main eventer go down. Yeah, and the thing is, you don't know how long he's going to be down from something like that. You yeah. don't know what the uh, recovery time is. You don't know if he's going to have to have surgery. Like you say, you say, like you say, uh, it can be managed, um, you know, with antibiotics and, and rest and whatnot, whatnot, I was reading. Um, but a good uh, diet, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, it's something that's very, very serious. Um, um, and then to lose one of your main players. Um, also, that, that right there throws a monkey wrench in everything. But that stuff, uh, that's, that, that, that's common. That's stuff that happens in wrestling. I just hope um, Kenny Omega comes back healthy and you know, 100% and continue um, doing what he loved to do, and that's, and that's perform, you know, more than anything. Yeah, and, and, and it feels like Kenny's just, and this is probably from, um, you know, being on the road so long, making those flights to Japan, working the indie dates, you know, just traveling, traveling, traveling. I'm sure as a performer and a wrestler, you think, oh, okay, I'm just I'm just worn down. I'm just worn down. And that's why I thought maybe it's a hernia. It'll go away. Maybe I can, you know, get a little rest, take a couple of days off, treat it, be okay. Um, and, and, you know, when you ignore stuff like that, that's how something can bubble up on you. And I think it's just more of a cautionary tale more than anything to, to everybody. Listen to your body. Your body knows better than you do. And I'm sure, Booker, I've heard you say it before, um, you can work hurt, but you can't work injured. And I think that that yeah, was probably yeah. some of the mentality there. But I'm glad that he caught it in time to where they can still get it addressed. He's going to be all right because you don't want to see anybody go through pain um, no matter what. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a speedy recovery as fast as he can, but as slow as he must, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. What do you think, though, about your girl, Charlotte Flair, um, suffered injury on SmackDown a couple weeks ago? And it, and it seems like, from what I'm reading, it's her That's MCL, good. ACL, and meniscus? All torn. Uh, it was a bad. It was a bad spill. It was gnarly, man. Uh, man, it, I mean, both of them took a, a bad bump. Uh, she just took the, the worst of it, and um, man, it's 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 just a bad break, bad timing. Just because WrestleMania is right around the corner, that pretty much just blows you right out of the water, as far as that goes. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's bad, bad timing, uh, but. That's part of the business. People need to understand it's not ballet. Stuff like that happens. It happens all the time. It's not a matter of when something like that is going to happen in the business. Not that in particular, but um, when something is going to happen. It's not when. Is it? I mean, if it's when. Um, so, so for me, uh, you know, Charlotte always worried me on that top rope. Even as graceful as she's always been, you know, she's always been able to stick it, you know, um, almost like perfect 10 every time. But I was always, so, and I've told her this before, I've always been so worried with her, even though that was just something that was a bump that was normally routine, whatever they was, it looked like a suplex or something they was getting ready to do. I'm not sure what they was getting ready to do. Um, but uh, stuff like that happens. And just like uh, Kenny Omega, I hope she get back 100%. You know, keep doing what she did. Now, I'm looking forward to the future. Now, obviously, you know, what, what What sucks about Charlotte is you're right here in WrestleMania season where um, it looked like maybe her and Bianca, were, they were trending that way or who knows what. But the silver lining here is if Charlotte Flair is going to be out for WrestleMania, you, you guarantee a Charlotte Flair match at WrestleMania typically every year because she's that damn good. And, and you put her in those high-pressure situations. Her and Rhea stole the show from me last year at WrestleMania 39 in L.A. 
But when one goes down, somebody has to take the place. And when I look kind of over there on SmackDown and I look at Raw, I look down at NXT, I see a lot of women maybe who could uh, ascend to that position of uh, being at a major program going into WrestleMania. And I'm just throwing it out there. I feel like this could be a good moment for Tiffany. I know you love Tiffany down there in NXT, but what I've seen her do with Becky Lynch in that last run, it shows me that, hey, does she still have some learning to do? I'm sure you always do. But could she be main roster ready and, and shock and amaze? I think she can, man. Yeah, yeah, um, no doubt. Um, in a heartbeat. I, I got high praise uh, for that one. You know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time I'm talking about not just the not just the uh, the stars, not just the moon, but but the nebula, man, all the way all the way out there. So so no no doubt, no doubt. So we'll have to see. Now I know we got to take a break. We have a lot of super chats to get to, but I also really want to talk to you about the UFC fight from over the weekend. So I, I know we got a couple more segments. Yeah, let's get it done. So stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. We interrupt your regularly scheduled program for an important public service announcement. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not a drill. Is it something more essential? A revolutionary ball trimmer that has landed right here from the future. That's right. Manscaped has been working overtime to upgrade your below-the-waist grooming experience with their cutting-edge lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. Let's cut to the chase. Every man out there knows the fear of going in for a close shave in those most sensitive areas. Yeah, we've been there, Book, but fear no more. The Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra is the hero that you deserve, featuring not one, but two interchangeable next-gen skin-safe blade heads. This isn't just your standard grooming. It gives that that super smooth finish with a new foil blade your heart desires and manscaped delivers. And it does not stop there. With dual LED spotlights, you can navigate the darkest of regions with precision regardless of your skin tone. And they thought of everything, man. Three-leaf setting comb. And guess what? My man, this bad boy is waterproof. That's right, Booker. Trim with confidence in or out of the shower. The Lawn Mower 5.0 trimmer helps reduce nicks, the risk of ingrown hairs, and those dreaded grooming accidents. And because we've got your back, man, get 20% off free shipping with the code, you know, Booker T at manscaped.com. Just think about it. 20% off free shipping at manscaped.com with the code Booker T. High-tech grooming for your low places. Look, man, from a personal experience, this isn't just a ball trimmer. It's like a spaceship for your man parts. Smooth, efficient, and it takes care of B.I. itness, dog. Remember, we're keeping it real with you all. We partner up with Manscaped because we believe in the product. They hooked us up, and we're passing that on to you. So, gentlemen, upgrade your grooming game, man, and visit manscaped.com. And don't forget to use the promo code Booker D for your exclusive deal. The Hall of Fame Podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. What's up, everybody? It's your man, Booker T, along with my main man, Brad Gilmore. We're back with another episode. And today, we want to talk to you about something that's incredibly important, especially during this time of the year. That's right, Booker. You know, as we head into the end of the year, it's the time for reflection, joy, and sometimes for a lot of us, a lot of stress. The holidays can be overwhelming for many, and it's okay to admit that. Look, this time of the year can be a lot to handle, and it's natural to feel some sadness or anxiety, but we've got something positive to share with you today. That's right, Book. It's therapy. It's a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Something you can look forward to. Something that can make you feel grounded. Something that equips you with the tools to manage everything that life throws at you. And when it comes to therapy, we've got the solution for you, BetterHelp. It's convenient, flexible, and entirely online. You can match up with a licensed therapist who fits your schedule. And you can even switch therapists at any time at no extra cost. The best part is it's so easy to get started. 
You just fill out a brief questionnaire, just like I did. I went through the process myself. It helped match me with a licensed therapist who will help me and can help you on your journey to personal growth and well-being. And here's the kicker, folks. You can get started today and receive 10% off your first month by visiting BetterHelp.com slash Booker T. That's right. BetterHelp. That's H-E-L-P dot com slash Booker T. You deserve to find your bright spot this season, and BetterHelp is here to help you do just that. Don't wait. Take that positive step towards a brighter future. Hall of Fame podcast is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp, professional, affordable, and convenient online counseling. Oh, yeah. Miracle made today. Oh, yes. Make sure you try them sheets, man. I I will tell you. I got some. Uh, I got some. Talk to me. Let me, know what you, let me know what you're talking about. Well, well, this is what I do like about them the most. Because, you know, me and the missus, we like the, the the temperature differently. You know, I like a little bit on the cold side. She likes a little bit on the warm side. And what I found with these Miracle Sheets is it's a nice balance. Because when you get in them, they're nice and cool, man. Like, as soon as you get in, at least mine are. I mean, it's got that, that cool factor. Almost like, you know, when you flip the pillow over. And it's like got that yeah. kind of chill to it. These are what these sheets cooler feel like when I get in them. Like cooler than the other side of the pillow. That's right, man. Yeah, you remember that. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> and so that's what they feel like to me. And, and um, you know, the other sheets, uh, and I don't really even know, I should probably uh, uh, look at what the other my other sheets are made out of, but I felt like I was always sleeping real warm with them. Like I'd wake up feeling warm. And with these, um, yeah. I'm not having that feeling. And I, and I like that. That's, I like it. <laughs> yeah they got a silk like uh feel to them yeah for That's sure what i like about them. and you know yeah. like some hotels you stay in they have sheets but they feel almost like what's the word sandpaper <laughs> you know they're like yeah, these yeah, are yeah. not what is this like a like 50 thread count <laughs> you know what i mean um <laughs> 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 but I don't do knitting. Are you knitting in a knitting club or no, something? No, you know that's how they measure the quality of sheets. It's like a All thousand right, okay. thread counts the highest. You know what right, I mean? Look, I, I've gotten that deep into how they make sheets. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm not, am, I, am, I, am, I, am, I, am I wrong here? What? But it's cool. It's cool. Look, hey, look. Now you know. No, you, I mean, that stuff you learn in college, I guess. <laughs> you got to get a degree to know that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know what I'm okay. To know about the thread count? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Thread counts normally feel sometimes at those hotels a little low. This one feels real hot. That's all I was saying. That's all I was saying. And look, I I got when I ordered the sheets, I got them like two days later. Uh, they were quick, yeah. quick. And right now, you, you use that promo code Booker T or go to dot com slash Booker. And, you know, you get twenty percent yeah, off yeah. and the free towels. By the way, the towels are dope too. Towels are dope. They're yeah, great. Yeah, I'm serious. No, no, I mean you. We ain't trying to stay here in the wrong direction. I promise this is not like, oh, they're paying it for an ad, so we're going to talk them up. No, this is not a gimmick. (laughs) Okay, I'm serious. Uh, I I bought some myself with my own money, you know, so this is not a gimmick. Me too. Uh, I told Charmel, I just told Charmel, you should have got them on Black Friday. (laughs) (laughs) Get that extra percentage off and use the promo code. And what's great about this, you know what I mean, because you're you're getting better sleep with AG1, so you can also sleep in a better, softer, comfortable sheets with uh, with yeah. Miracle. And the thing is, too, they're self-cleaning, so if the blue chew gets a little out of control, <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Like, like, it's all lining up. It's all lining up. All the sponsors go together. You know what I mean? You might need some better help after all that. <laughs> you're going to need something. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Hopefully you manscaped. Look at that. We got it all in one plug. And you know what? You're going to feel so great after after all that. You're going to want to sell tickets to the next one. So you can go to game time. <laughs> and they, <laughs> and oh, do it all. Man, that's uh, hey, oh, by the way, also, I want to shout out another uh, show on the network and something you were just on. I listened to it yesterday, which was uh, the Kurt Angle show. You're on the Kurt Angle show. And I want to shout out, he and his co-host yep. had a lot of good questions, man. And um, it was more than just a, a casual convo. It was it was an interview. And I and I really liked 
the approach from it, and it was a it was a good listen, good to, good to listen to. Shout out to Kurt Angle and the Kurt Angle Show. I always had a great time working with Kurt. Uh, it was great being on the show. Got a chance to go down memory lane, talk about some of the, some of the cool moments that we had, actually had a chance to have together, as well as the match that him and I never got a chance to finish. So yeah, yeah, it was great. It was great. Now I want to talk to you about a couple of big name stars that are now on the shelf. Um, Kenny Omega and Charlotte Flair. I guess we can start with Kenny. Kenny posted something on Friday from the hospital bed, and he had thought he had a hernia for a little while. It turns out he's had a bad bout of diverticulitis, um, which for people yeah. who don't know, something that Brock Lesnar uh, ended essentially his UFC run and um, definitely his UFC title run. They had to remove a foot of his intestines because the infection was so bad. So it's not something you can play around with. It's definitely a, a condition and a disorder that can be managed, but when you don't know you have it, it's hard to manage it. And um, Kenny's down with it, and it sounds like he's going to be down for a significant amount of time, and he's still one of the top names in AEW um, in, in, in one of their mainstays. I mean, that's it's hard when you have a main eventer go down. Yeah, and the thing is, you don't know how long he's going to be down from something like that. You yeah. don't know what the um, recovery time is. You don't know if he's going to have to have surgery. Like you say, you say, like you say, uh, it can be managed. Um, you know, with antibiotics and and rest and whatnot, whatnot. I was reading, um, but a good um, yeah, it, it's yeah, yeah, it's something that's very, very serious. Um, um, and then to lose one of your main players, um, also that that right there throws a monkey wrench in everything. But that stuff, uh, that's that that that's common. That stuff that happens in wrestling. I just hope um, Kenny Omega comes back healthy and you know, one hundred percent and continue um, doing what he loved to do, and that's and that's perform. You know, more than anything. Yeah, and 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 it feels like Kenny's just, and this is probably from um, you know being on the road so long, making those flights to Japan, working the indie dates, you know, just traveling, traveling, traveling. I'm sure as a performer and a wrestler, you think, oh, okay, I'm just I'm just worn down. I'm just worn down. And that's why I thought maybe it's a hernia. It'll go away. Maybe I can, you know, get a little rest, take a couple of days off, treat it, be okay. Um, and, and, you know, when you ignore stuff like that, that's how something can bubble up on you. And I think it's just more of a cautionary tale more than anything to, to everybody. Listen to your body. Your body knows better than you do. And I'm sure, Booker, I've heard you say it before. Um, you can work hurt, but you can't work injured. And I think that that yeah, was probably yeah. some of the mentality there. But I'm glad that he caught it in time to where they can still get it addressed. He's going to be all right because you don't want to see anybody go through pain um, no matter what. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for a speedy recovery as fast as he can, but as slow as he must, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. What do you think, though, about your girl, Charlotte Flair, um, suffered injury on SmackDown a couple of weeks ago? And it, and it seems like, from what I'm reading, it's her That's MCL, good. ACL, and meniscus. All torn. Uh, it was a bad. It was a bad spill. It was gnarly, man. Uh, man, it, I mean, both of them took a, a bad bump. Uh, she just took the, the worst of it, and um, man, it's 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 just a bad break, bad timing. Just because WrestleMania is right around the corner, that pretty much just blows you right out of the water, as far as that goes. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's bad, bad timing, uh, but. That's part of the business. People need to understand it's not ballet. Stuff like that happens. It happens all the time. It's not a matter of when something like that is going to happen in the business. Not that in particular, but um, when something is going to happen. It's not when. Is it, I mean, if it's when. Um, so so for me, uh, you know, Charlotte always worried me on that top rope. Even as graceful as she's always been, you know, she's always been able to stick it, you know, um, almost like perfect 10 every time. But I was always, so, and I've told her this before, I've always been so worried with her, even though that was just something that was a bump that was normally routine, whatever they was, it looked like a suplex or something they was getting ready to do. Right? I'm not sure what they was getting ready to do. Um, but uh, stuff like that happens. And just like uh, Kenny Omega, I hope she get back 100%. You know, keep doing what she do. Now, I'm looking forward to the future. Now, obviously, you know, what, what What sucks about Charlotte is you're right here in WrestleMania season where um, it looked like maybe her and Bianca, were, they were trending that way or who knows what. But the silver lining here 
is if Charlotte Flair is going to be out for WrestleMania, you you guarantee a Charlotte Flair match at WrestleMania typically every year because she's that damn good. And and you put her in those high pressure situations. Her and Rhea stole the show from me last year at WrestleMania 39 in LA. But when one goes down, somebody has to take the place. And when I look kind of over there on SmackDown and I look at Raw, I look down at NXT, I see a lot of women maybe who could uh, ascend to that position of uh, being in a major program going into WrestleMania. And I'm just throwing it out there. I feel like this could be a good moment for Tiffany. I know you love Tiffany down there in NXT, but what I've seen her do with Becky Lynch in that last run, it shows me that, hey, does she still have some learning to do? I'm sure you always do. But could she be main roster ready and, and shock and amaze? I think she can, man. Yeah, yeah, um, no doubt. Um, in a heartbeat. I, I got high praise uh, for that when you know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, every time I'm talking about not just the, not just the, uh, the stars, not just the moon, but, but the nebula, man. All the way, all the way out there. So, so no, no doubt, no doubt. So we'll have to see. Now, I know we got to take a break. We have a lot of Super Chats to get to, but I also really want to talk to you about the UFC fight from over the weekend. So I, I know we got a couple more segments. Yeah, let's get it done. So stick around, guys. You're in the Hall of Fame. We'll be back in a minute. Welcome back inside the Hall of Fame, guys. I, I thought you lost, lost, lost count, but this, this is our last segment. This is our last, last segment, segment. yes. So I lost count on that. Here, but he- we have a few Super Chats, but this is what I really want to get down to real quick. Leon Edwards, Colby Covington from over the weekend. Uh, Leon Edwards continues to dominate at 170 pounds uh, and shows that he is the real deal. And it wasn't just, hey, you you caught Usman at the last second because then he comes back and he beats Usman. Now he beats Colby Covington in more than pretty convincing fashion and dominating fashion by decision, unanimous decision, Kobe Covington did not look like the same Kobe Covington um, that we've seen before, um, you know, with Jorge Masvidal and even the fights with Tyron Woodley and, and, and the first fight that he had with Kamaru Usman. He seemed like a different fighter in my estimation. What did you think of uh, Saturday? And, and were you as pleased as I was that Kobe took the L? And, and I say that because I feel like he crossed... He's always flirting with the line, but he crossed a, a, a pretty big line for me in that press conference talking about Leon's uh, family. I mean, I mean he, he's a he's a he's just he's the laws, you know, that they come, you know what I mean, as far as a a uh, pugilist, you know, that's not something um that you know pugilists uh, normally do as far as go that low in the gutter, uh as far as to try to sell a fight. It's like I say, this is a guy that been away from the game for two two years. And um Get a title shot. He should have been uh, pretty pleased by that. He should have been pr- pleased that he had the president, former president of the United States, out there, um, you know, cheering for him. Um, it seemed like that would have made him fight a, a little bit better too, and, and go out there and try to, you know, get a victory, um, which is something that he hasn't done in any of his title fights. Um, so everything that uh, that um, Kobe Covington um, has got, he should be thankful for because a lot of it has been given to him. It really has, uh, uh, and, and to to. To go as low as he did, definitely um, a despicable act, despicable uh, person. And um, me personally, I just hope this is um, the last time we see Kobe Co- Covington near a championship bout. Oh, I don't see how he gets back. Especially- and, then, and then he called out um, Wonderboy Thompson. Why ain't he calling out um, any of these young guys? Why, I, why? I've never heard him call out anybody that um, that that's on the on the come up. He he just what he he's just looking for a payday. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, okay. Congratulations uh, to Leon Edwards. I got a chance to meet him when I was OCs um, last time. Got a photo with him, um, so it's pretty pretty cool. Yeah, shout out to the champ, Leon. I mean, he's proven himself. And and the thing is with Colby, um, he's a polarizing figure, and that a lot of that was done intentionally. And I always thought that he was working the gimmick. Um, but I will say um, this last time, it was it was he was disgraceful. And, he, and you know what? This is how you know he was disgraceful because even Dana White, who's been a pretty big proponent of Colby Covington and, and is great friends with the pres, uh, former president of the United States, he said he crossed a line. I mean, he said that's not yeah, something he, you do. He, he, he said he crossed the line, but that was it. He, he really didn't do anything about well, yeah, but look, Colby look, Covington. And I'm, I'm not so saying... Somebody like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a big I'm believer of freedom of speech. You know what I mean? Same. When you're working for my organization... 
and you making my organization look like the way Kobe Covington is making it look. Seem like someone would want to step in and do something about that. That's just me personally. It's just me personally. I don't disagree with and you. That, that's, that's if anybody was doing what Kobe Covington was doing, they would not be a part of my organization. That's just me. Right. And, you know, I, and I, I don't do disagree, it. but we got to get the Super Chats. Congrats to Leon. And also, I'm excited to see Michael Venom Page in the UFC, you know, after all, the, yeah, all this definitely. time. You know, shout out to MVP. Yeah. Um, here we go. This is our first of the day. Super Chat. Demarius Oliver. What up, book? Long time fam. Much love to you. Hope to see your DVD cover covering your matches. You got you have a collection, right? Or no? I don't have, no, no, I don't have one yet. I don't have a greatest matches. I don't have a DVD yet. Um, I'm waiting well, on it. Well, I'm waiting well, on it as well. I'm sure they, that they. I ahead. think I saw a collection then on the WWE Network of Booker T's best matches because I, I definitely have seen this out somewhere. Well, and I'm waiting on the. They Go shut ahead. down the home video division. Well, they need to you know do something. You know what I mean? Make something because uh, I got a lot of great matches. Yeah, we forgot about how good. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes it's, I I do feel like they've forgotten, um, yeah. like just how great. To me, like what's so cool about your career is if you watch you in in tag and then your singles in WCW and then almost at your end of your first WWE run, you almost weren't the same wrestler you were in your singles run in WCW in the sense of like oh, your psychology changed a lot. I just could act like I could do it at, at that time. <laughs> but that was when you were more over. <laughs> Like oh, yeah. you were oh, your yeah. most over, and, and, and you know what's crazy is you said it in that in that Kurt Angle interview, and something I never considered, but you still left on top as far as your King Booker run. It would have been interesting to see King Booker in a face capacity, like to see what that looked I, like. I, I, but I don't, I don't, I, I don't think I did. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it would have worked the same. But it would have been interesting to see. Um, our next one comes from Cali Toenail. And if you find the tenderoni, that is right for you. Cali Toenail says, the talent is stacked on both sides of the fence. Now enters AJ Styles attacking Roman and LA Knight. IDK, but I love it. And AJ is Randy. Deserves one more run. AJ, I've been wondering why he's been on the back burner. I think he's been dealing with some injuries or maybe it just hadn't been his time. But he came back, and they injected him immediately into the main event scene, which is where a guy like AJ Styles should be. Time to turn up the heat. That's all it is. Time to let all the, the big dogs play. It, 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 we, we, we're in a, a strange time in the business right now. We've, we, really, we really are getting ready to see what this thing is truly all about, man. Uh, if all the stars are aligning at one time, and we're going to see um, how this thing play out. So yeah. I'm just I'm gonna just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah man. Um, our next one, Big Brizo, Uncle Book hit the Harlem Hangover on Triple H. Yeah, we saw it. Well, you did do that, right? One of yeah, the best hangovers you had. I mean, it was sweet. It was sweet. I, I, bang. You know what I mean? I didn't get to win, but I did everything I wanted to do in that match as far as uh, performance wise. You know what I thought about what I would love to do, and I don't know if you would like to do it or not because you you're not big on going back and watching too much of your old stuff, but. I would love to do a similar that you get to, that a lot of the row fans don't see, but the row roster does. You know, when you do your film studies, I would like a, to do like something on the YouTube channel where we watch that WrestleMania match because if people go back and see it and and hear what and just look at the psychology and look how the match was laid out, I don't think that they would have the same feeling that a lot of people do. It was a, it was it was a lot of emotion. It was a lot of emotion. It, it, it would it always be the same as far as the people that was watching it back then just because there was a lot of emotion went into the match it got, and, the, and the match got blurred um, as far as that goes as far as you know what people was feeling and what people was watching that's the way I always look at that match but it was a great match, it was a great match. <laughs> so good it was really good man um, Michael's Wrestling Channel hey Booker and Brad really love the episode to row I'm a huge Eric Lockhart fan said the first person ever and I'm <laughs> I'm just kidding Eric and I'm uh, the row and, and I'm glad he's the row TV champion I've been a huge supporter of him for almost 13 years love Eric Eric's great oh, awesome man. Lockhart brothers man they started right there with reality wrestling as kids man that are growing up and, and, and Eric Lockhart he's in a position to make a move he's in a position to make a play and that's what reality wrestling is all about I, you know, Eric's a good a good buddy of mine, and I love to see the 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 evolution of his character right now on reality wrestling television. He and I actually started 
on the same day at Reality of Wrestling. Both of us did. And um, it's it's awesome to see him doing another run here back. Oh, yeah. He's got a hell of a run. He's got a hell of a run. And it's still going. Uh, our final one of the day is from M Music Book. Two things. As an alumni of the Sportatorium, are you going to see the Iron Claw Von Erichs movie? Also, oh, Tony yes. Norris called you out on the BS on this BS podcast I ran across. He's trying to stay relevant. We got about two minutes left. Uh, I'm, I'm going to watch the Iron Claw. I can't wait to watch it. We got about two, two and a half minutes left. Yeah. yeah. Just to respond to Tony Norris, you know. This guy, you know, he, he he talked about me being in prison. I actually had heard the interview and said about, you know, how a low life I was got, you know, going to prison for robbing people. And and I must say, I did go to prison for robbing people. Um but I but I do say I was a kid and I think I've atoned for every every piece of dirt that I I, I put down um, back in the day. I, I was a kid that made a mistake. Um but but he but he talks about being in a game. Um, uh, as a youth himself, you know, but, but what does get, what do gangs do? What, what do they normally do? They normally not, not the pillars of, of society. Uh, I'm just saying, uh, as well as it, 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 I'm going to just debunk one story. He said also, he said that him and my brother started going to the wrestling school before I started going to, I was still in prison, I guess, when they went to the wrestling school, according to him. But, uh, my brother and I, we started going to the wrestling school. Um, and Tony Norris had no intentions on doing it. He was playing semi-pro ball at this time. And, and, and I'm, I'm just saying this because there was, they asked him a question uh, on that podcast, and they said, how was it working with Joe Blanchard and Scott Casey? He said, well, I never worked with Joe Blanchard and Scott Casey. Well, when they was there at the beginning of, 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 the, of the wrestling school, they were the trainers at the wrestling school at the beginning. And that's why I say he he get on these podcasts and, and no, it was, it's never any pushback as far as, you know, trying to find any truth in, in anything that he's saying. He also had, had one more story and we, we about to get out of here. I know we, we run over time a little bit. He said, okay. um, he said he had a, a buddy, um, um, that told him a story about when I was in prison, he said, now, if I keep talking, he's going to tell that story. Now, now I, I don't have any prison buddies, <laughs> okay? But obviously, he still have buddies that was in prison, at, in the same prison that I was at, so so to speak. That's what he's saying. And he's got he's got a story that he's going to tell. Well, I hope he tell that story. I, I really do. Because I'm, I'm not – he'll, he'll see a different side of me uh, if he does tell some false story that's totally – not true, because I got I got facts, I got receipts as, as far as everything that I'm saying. You tell a lie about me, he's he's probably going to end up in court, and he's probably going to end up getting sued um, uh, by making a, by defaming me. So please tell some story that you heard from some prison buddy that you had about me, because it would be totally falsehood um, if you make up a story about me, um, um, Tony Norris. I, I'm I'm gonna just leave it at that. I'm not going to, you know, take it any further than that. Other than Tony Norris has always been a, 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 a notorious, lying piece of you know what. We're going to wrap it up. I uh, want to thank everybody for stepping inside the Hall of Fame. Get your champagne, which is bad. Caviar dreams. Brad, how you doing, man? You good? You ready to roll? Let's do it. Peace. We love, peace. We love you. And we out.
Ed Milet Show showcases the greatest peak performers sharing their journey, knowledge, and thought leadership. This is one of the all-time best pieces of advice ever given on the show. Actor Rain Wilson. The number one thing that psychologists point to with young people of why they are struggling so much in this mental health epidemic is they don't have resilience. So how do you build resilience if you don't understand suffering itself? The Ed Milet Show is available on YouTube or wherever you listen. Hi there. Sorry for the interruption, but are you enjoying this show on Google Podcasts? You should know that the Google Podcasts app is going away this spring. That's right, going away, gone as in no longer available. You can still enjoy this show elsewhere, though. Try out Spotify or Amazon Music, or maybe TuneIn is more your style. Whatever app you switch to, be sure to follow so you never miss the next episode. And thanks for listening wherever you listen.